Greetings this evening. I'm Andre Ash, digital anchor from the Michigan Chronicle, and this is the State of the Conservancy, brought to you by the Bell Isle Conservancy. BIC is celebrating 10 years of impact, and we're going to talk about the work uh, this evening that it's been doing, and in just a moment, we'll be talking with its president and CEO, Michelle Hodges of, again, the Bell Isle Conservancy. It's been doing so much great work over the past 10 years. Can you believe it? 10 years. And we want to bring you a part uh, of the conversation and how you could provide input into what you like to see uh, and take part in on our great jewel, jewel here in Detroit, and that is Bell Isle Park. We'll talk about what the Conservancy, again, has been doing as it um, partners with the city and the state uh, to be good stewards, public and private stewards of this great jewel. Uh, also, we'll talk about sustaining a viable future for Bell Isle through this public-private partnership. So we invite you to be a part of the conversation and to uh, head more into the impact that the BIC has done over these past years. We now turn it over and welcome its president and CEO, Michelle Hodges. Good evening, Michelle. Good evening, Andre. How's my favorite Bell Isle, Bell Isle kayaker doing today? <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the weather to warm up so I can do so. <laughs> We're so grateful to you for being an important partner tonight and for loving Bell Isle. In fact, I was thinking I should give you a Bell Isle high, and then that got me thinking we should do a new hashtag, hashtag B-I-H-I, -I, right? Bell Isle high. <laughs> but not only are we grateful to you, we're also grateful to the community for being here with us tonight. It's always a pleasure to talk about beautiful beautiful Belle Isle, which is made even more beautiful by the 4.9 million visitors that join us each year, especially those that are on this call. So we're really looking forward tonight to talking about what um, we do, how we do it, and how we can empower our community to be part of that, and how they too can influence the decisions and the experiences that are happening on Belle Isle, because we're much better when we lead with our community and not simply for it. Great parks need great support and broad-based support. So we're glad to be here tonight. Broad-based support, indeed. And again, we invite our audience to be a part of the conversation. If you would like to weigh in and uh, give us your thoughts, your comments, or questions, questions, you can do so on our following social media uh, outlets here with the Bell Isle Conservancy. Follow us on, on Twitter, BIC, that's Detroit BIC on Twitter. Also on Instagram, give us a follow. We got all the hashtags and the uh, at symbol follows uh, here on the screen. So that's again, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a QR code as well. So you if you bring those cell phones to the screen and uh, tap in, you can be a part of the conversation tonight where we are live streaming here on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Just search Bell Isle Conservancy. All right. So uh, as we move ahead into the, the program tonight, Michelle, uh, let's talk about uh, the 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 impact that Bell Owl has, the Bell Owl Conservancy has been a part of so many different uh, works in the community, um, bringing people in to be a part of uh, activating different spaces. And we put together a, a reel, a video to show you some of the different projects that have unfolded over 10 years. Take a look. <laughs>
cheer feed out thousands of students served uh, I think over a million visitors at the aquarium over the past uh, few years or so. And then you also have thousands of trash that has been collected. Michelle, let's let's uh, let's talk here for a moment, because for people watching uh, who want to learn more uh, and be involved more, what is um, the Bell Isle Conservancy? Well, after that video, it makes me want to dance, right? How could you keep <laughs> not moving in your seat, right? Um, yeah. And you're right, there has been such an impact and conservancies play a really important role in park management. We are the private nonprofit organization and conservancies can raise money in a way that the public sector cannot. Mm -hmm. And we perform many other duties as well. Um, typically a conservancy would not own the land. In this case, the city continues to own the island with, um, with a stake by the state of Michigan and its management role, uh, but we clearly do have real impact. And in our case, it's been almost $14 million of impact during the course of our life hitherto. Um, the mission of our conservancy is something um, I think we can all be on board with as well. We love Belle Isle, and I certainly love our mission as well, um, especially the now and forever part of that mission. So I think that slide will be up shortly and folks can read it on their own. And, and again, honing in on that now and forever part is, is the most important part because Belle Isle has been with us from the beginning of time and, sh and that should be the case going forward as well. Absolutely. Let's talk about, you know, you, you talked about it, the conservancy playing an important role uh, in perhaps raising uh, more dollars and perhaps the typical traditional government agency can do so. Uh, so with the city owning the park and the state managing it, how does the conservancy fit into, say, the management structure of how uh, Bell Isle works? Well, it is a three-pronged structure, as you noted. The state um, manages the park by policy, right? And uh, and that's under the terms of a lease that uh, oversees a 30-year period. And in, in addition to that, they they serve it with a commitment too, which I think is important to add and to note. And our and our city plays its role by legacy, right? Um, you you can't and geography. We're within the city of Detroit, and you can't change that legacy part. It, we're, we're, it's it's so much a part of the DNA um, of our city, right? So that will always be the case and something that can't change. In terms of how the Conservancy plays its role, it goes all the way back to the days of Frederick Law Olmsted, who's the landscape architect that inspired many of um, the country's great parks back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And he, his DNA is here in Detroit. And he knew that in order to ensure ongoing sustainability for your park, you had to schedule investment. You had to schedule ongoing maintenance. And that's a tough task for government alone and particularly in today's day. So conservancies are needed to help raise those dollars, to optimize staffing, to enhance uh, maintenance and those sorts of things in tandem with our public sector partners. So by working together with those partners, we can identify those priorities. We can um, take those uh, priorities and find opportunities to bring them to the finish line. And when doing that, we all win, um, especially the park user wins in that scenario. Uh, and the best way to realize that success is with a public-private partnership like we have here. Uh, and that does not stop with the Conservancy. Those private partners extend to corporations, to our foundation community, and to others. And we're forever grateful to those partners for standing stridently with us on behalf of our Belle Isle Park. All right, I. All right, so I think. Yes, yeah, see, I could read your I, lips, though, Andre. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're playing a little game of reading my lips, but here we go. So I love that. So the conservancy fits within the realm of working with the city and the state, and and so many other different partners, right? But what does all this look like in action? So in action, you know, our city uh, partners couldn't be more important. In fact, that was proven to earlier today when we were sitting down and talking about how we ensure the long uh, term uh, sustainability of the park. They continue to retain the ownership of it. And in many ways, they're really the entity that represents the interests of the people. They keep us grounded, right? It's that healthy tension that we all need so that we never forget who our customer is. And that is the Detroiter and all of those who enjoy our very special Belle Isle Park. And an example of where some of that in 
intersection could happen is we're required to make a presentation to the Detroit City Council each year. So the public's invited to that. And, and again, we can exchange feedback and make sure we're in, in a good position and, and, and meeting the needs of all. And then the second partner, as you've noted, and as we've discussed, is our state. Um, there are caretakers, right? They have that responsibility for day-to-day -day operations and caring for the island. And they facilitate the many repairs and maintenance uh, you know, needs. We, we, we estimate there's more than $300 million, million dollars of need. And our state has just been a really solid partner in making that happen. In fact, in the course of time that they've been with us, we estimate about $80 million of input has or impact has been leveraged. So we applaud them for that. And we're very grateful to them um, for playing that role um, for the next or for that 30 year period. And then, as we've said, the Conservancy is that third uh, tier of the partnership. And we are the public interface, the public voice. Uh, we really advance the engagement and make sure that we never um, lose that opportunity to connect with our community. And we like to sum up where our focus is into four primary areas, the first of which is the people. We've already pointed out how important the people are, uh, but there's also other people like our volunteers. Uh, more than 10,000 volunteers have contributed their time, uh, at, at, at totaling more than 85,000 hours of service, which equates to about $2 million of benefit. So the people are really important. Um, the second area that we focused on, focus on is the planning area. We do a lot of planning for the park. Um, one example, a more recent example, is the creation of the Detroit River Coalition. Through a grant from the EPA, we were able to do some strategic planning that enabled that Detroit River Coalition, which is 11 of the river-facing river organizations working collaboratively and really defining how that coalition can best collaborate um, and be regional stewards of our waterway. So that's been a, a critical planning process, in addition to the, those that we've done for the aquarium, for the fountain, for the beachfront. And then the third area of focus is programming. Um, we'll talk a lot about that tonight, right? The, uh, the 18,000 students that we serve through field trips, the 1,500 people we serve via tours, and the 9,000 hours that the aquarium is open um, to the public. And then lastly, our area of focus uh, includes preservation. The $6 million that's been invested in the Belle Isle Aquarium to keep it free and open to the public since 2012. We've marshaled many resources, and I hope that's obvious to our community as we work really hard on behalf of our park. Yeah, and I love the, the four areas of focus that you just talked about, people, planning, programming, and preservation. Uh, and uh, even when you talk about um, what, whether it's preservation, uh, the aquarium, or just noticing even some of the small things like, you know, a new um, pathway or new sidewalks that are being created for or pede new pedestrian traffic or beach or um, water improvements. Uh, but I think one of the key areas here, you know, is people never losing that focus and, and you losing that, that touch of what Belle Isle has been. And that's really making it open and accessible uh, to the people and and to what the the people of the detroit area want to want to see and what they want to feel and experience when they come to bell Isle park well and aren't we getting a good example from jessica hoppy about how she uh she knows that her family enjoyed the park and the many stories that she's heard from her dad who grew up and went to Osborne High School. Uh, so, and to me, that's what really increases the responsibility I feel on my shoulders to really protect Belle Isle for its people, whether it's to use it for the family reunions or the Freedom March or the Memorial Ride, right? It's where people come to mark life's moments. Without people, we wouldn't be a park. Absolutely. And we're getting comments coming in throughout uh, the night we have, um, Phyllis Moore tuning in from Fairmount, West Virginia. All right, Phyllis, thanks so much uh, for watching us tonight. Uh, and, we, and we know that there are a lot of people who, of course, have so much of an um, attachment to Detroit and to Belle Isle, and, and perhaps they're living uh, someplace else now, but they still, their heart and connection is still with Belle Isle Park. We also have Kimberly Ann uh, tuning in tonight saying hi from the 48214. Thanks for tuning in. The hashtag tonight is SOBIC 22. That's the State of Bell Isle Conservancy. Uh, we thank you for watching tonight. Um, Kim is one of our most dedicated volunteers. We love that. Okay. All right. So uh, as we talk about building upon 
uh, 10 years of the Belloc Conservancy. Uh, one of the people who has a special touch and connection unto the people and to the projects that are, uh, that are ongoing uh, and being created on Belle Isle Park is uh, Michelle, one of your colleagues, uh, Io Thomas from the Belle Isle Conservancy. Uh, she is the Community Engagement uh, Associate uh, for the Belle Isle Conservancy. Io, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for hosting and moderating and being with us tonight. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. So talk about more about the public-private um, partnership with the Bell Alkin Service. Uh, what does it look like, its impact uh, on behalf of um, the organization? Yes, um, so just to speak to that a little bit, and Michelle talked a lot about it at an institutional level, right? I think that there is a kind of a dual or multi-level of public-private partnership. So we know that the Conservancy is a private institution, but we've got the institutional partnerships, right? That's yeah. where we are connected to the community in various ways. So that's things like the Detroit Parks Coalition. We've already referenced um, Detroit River Coalition, Riverfront Conservancy, um, Department of Neighborhoods, who we've recently connected with. And of course, we um, interface with City Council at least once a year through um, you know, the presentation that occurs in collaboration with the state of Michigan. But the that is the direct um, connection that we have. And so we're talking about the people, right? So there is a level of connection and partnership between the conservancy as a private entity and the public um, in terms of individual users of the park. And so the ways that we're able to see those, you know, direct interfaces or direct connections are through things like participation in programs and events that gives us feedback that lets us know whether or not things are relevant, whether they're interesting, you know, if they are um, resonating and connecting with the people who are um, visiting the park. The same for our feedback form. You know, that's something that people can continuously leave that feedback and we can use it for planning and understanding, et cetera, um, visiting our website. We have uh, the ability to see how many people are visiting our website year over year, that sort of thing. So if traffic um, is generated to our website, if people are using our website as a place for primary information, then we know that there is a sense of relevancy there as well. Um, and so those are just some of the ways that we um, connect and all of those things allow us to fulfill our mission. All of those things allow us to be advocates for um, park experience, park users, um, and um, I would just say the many, many things that we do. Um, but it's it's the balance and the collaboration of those things that allows us to work, not one or the other. Well, and I.O., you're a big reason why it all works, too, and it's such a pleasure to serve with you. And in addition to the people that are managing the park, we also need good governance, right? We need good guidance. We need a good rudder, so to speak. And we, we, we effectuate that through multiple tools, um, the first of which is our strategic plan. And we're just now um, finalizing uh, the most recent version of it. And you'll see our community will see in there that our focus is going to continue to be on advocacy. That's one of our four pillars. Uh, it also will continue to focus on partnerships because that's how you expand your reach. That's how you know you're doing something right for your community, as Io just illustrated. And then thirdly, we'll continue to focus on our relationship with the DNR and making sure that that is solid and then ongoing initiatives like um, that will ensure our sustainability as an organization right because if we don't exist the park user does no longer has that voice like it would or these projects don't happen or maybe the aquarium doesn't stay open so it's important to ensure that we have a business model in place that will allow us to do those things and that aquarium is something that Mm, the, certainly not on my watch is that bugger going to shut down. You know, it, it opened in 1904. We spent more than $1.2 million during the pandemic, uh, about $6 million total since we were founded, uh, to be sure that we can serve those 65,000 visitors that have come to us just since um, just this year. And that was a shortened year. 
So uh, we're excited about continuing to keep that aquarium uh, afloat, so to speak. And I should mention too, in addition to that strategic plan, um, we also have a memorandum of understanding with the state of Michigan that oversees our relationship with them. Um, and it, it, it's a simple document that establishes uh, roles for each body, each, each um, party, and then also sets expectations and, and allows us to work cooperatively toward common goals. And then the third prong there, uh, in addition to our strategic plan and our MOU, is the Belle Isle Park Advisory Committee. Um, that was created as part of the lease um, that the state has with the city to manage Belle Isle. And as part of it, there are seven of us that have been appointed by either the mayor of Detroit, the governor of the state of Michigan, um, and or the city council of Detroit uh, to represent our community and to do that well. We meet monthly, our meetings are public, and all are welcome. And I encourage everybody to visit belleislepark.org Org, where you'll find all of the documents and minutes and you can sign up to receive email notifications. You can also go to community engagement at belleisleconservancy.org. Um, Io is the face behind that and she'll get back with you right away with details. So that, that's how we uh, work together uh, to ensure the best for the park. Yeah, working together is key. Uh, that um, fiscal partnership policy is also key uh, to keeping, you know, the, the things that we care about on Bell Isle Park uh, open and thriving uh, for people to enjoy. I tell you, uh, this past summer, it has not been one instance where I haven't visit, visited the park and have circled around the aquarium and there are just uh, a line of people waiting to go in or just a lot of different traffic and activity happening. So uh, definitely this this partnership and what fiscal policy looks like and the Bell Isle Conservancy being again, that's that steward amongst this public private partnership is very, um, very key. Uh, but drop in your comments. We wanna hear from you tonight. If you're watching us on Facebook Live or on YouTube, we are taking your comments. We are taking your questions. So be a part of the conversation, hashtag S O B I C 20. I'm sorry. S O B I C 22. Uh, hashtag S O B I C 22. That's the state of the uh, conservancy state of the Bell Isle conservancy uh, that you are watching right now and uh, celebrating 10 years. So uh, the question that we have for uh, you tonight is um, what do you, what do you think? Uh, what do you think so far and, and how do how is someone for you know who's who's watching this right now and they and they're asking the question well where do someone like me fit in michelle or io how do you answer that um i'll jump back in here i can share that um you know i, I alluded to this a little bit earlier but people are a major part they're just as important partners to us as our institutional partnerships right mm -hmm. and so um we could talk about, or th there are a couple things that come to mind, right? We could talk about the fact that um, urban parks like Belle Isle, Central Park, you know, just other parks that are um, urban centered, they serve the immediate community first. Um, and because they serve the immediate, immediate community and, and focus on really what that means, they're able to strengthen and bolster serving um, all of the visitors that come to that area, um, whether you live across the bridge, across the town, or across the world. Um, and so I can just say with that, that that having that emphasis or having that kind of um, compass allows us to focus on a couple of things, and that's um, maintaining the integrity of the park experience, and that's also um, maintaining our responsibility to park culture. So if I were to talk about maintaining the integrity of the experience, we're talking about things like infrastructure, we're talking about things like stakeholder connectivity, we're talking about ensuring conservation efforts and things that we share together, which allow each of us to come to visit Belle Isle for our own independent reasons, whether it's kayaking, barbecuing, you know, um, arbory or fishing or just all of the things that we have come to identify with individually as our um, connection um, to Belle Isle. And so that is maintaining the integrity of the park experience, which also supports, um, and that's, like I said, that's infrastructure, um, which is not just physical infrastructure, but people infrastructure. So volunteer program and the like. Um, but the other side of that is maintaining our responsibility to park culture. It's because we have those connections to the park that we all see the park as special, 
right? So we all have these sort of intangible connections, these things that make us feel a certain way, or we, you know, connect nostalgia to it. Or um, I think someone earlier said that her dad, you know, visited the park and told her stories. And so that um, generated her connection, maybe even before she was born. So we have all of that happening, right? And so we do that. Um, and that, that ties back into our mission, which is to protect, preserve, restore, and enhance, right? That unique landscape, but it's also the social and recreational elements of that, which allow us to acknowledge the gem that Belle Isle is. You, sp you spoke to it being a jewel, and we all recognize that um, for our own reasons. And so recognizing that people have their own independent relationships and have for, you know, long before I was here, long before any of us were here, and maybe even long before Belle Isle was formalized as a part, people have always had independent relationships. And so it's our goal um, through our mission to ensure that all of those things can continue in perpetuity, um, which is why we need people, right? People help us to understand what the priorities are. People help us to understand what really um, is resonating or um, relevant is, you know, subjective, right? Is it, mm -hmm. why is it relevant? Um, so that's something to think about, but it, it um, ties back into our framework, our engagement framework. And that's what I want to spend just one moment on. Um, it's, so we have this framework, there are things that must happen, whether they're environmentally, um, from a policy standpoint, um, from other limitations or um, guidelines that may exist, right? So we know that that exists. And then there's all the room that we have for collaboration and co-creation, and that's where people come in. And then, of course, we have the portion where we take what we've learned and we continue to evolve and grow. And that's what keeps us or helps us to keep moving forward. Um, and it also contributes to the way that we build and grow our relationships. Well, I I just want to say, speaking of people and engagement, uh, because obviously you're doing just that. Uh, C. Nicole Nelson says chimes in this evening. She says, "I am attending. I am an attending volunteer training because of I.O. I oh, love that. That's love awesome. That. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. I'll have to reach out. So, C. Nicole Nelson, if you could leave your information in the email, I'd love to to reach out to you. Absolutely. And we're still getting comments coming in. So if you like to engage, have a question or comment, um, please feel free to do so in our chat uh, as you're watching us live on YouTube or Facebook and also be a part of the conversation with our hashtag. Uh, that is uh, S-O-B-I-C 22. All right. So uh, moving ahead with the uh, program tonight, let's let's talk about. Let's talk about 10 years, right? Um, the Bell Hawk Conservancy is celebrating 10 years. I don't even know what 10 years feels like. <laughs> but, but certainly this is a special night because you all do. You put in a lot of work. And so, you know, this closes 10 years. And as you mark this milestone, what does moving forward uh, look like, Michelle? It's so strange to be able to think of yourself in decades, isn't it? <laughs> right. um, Andre, and we have, look at all the momentum that's be, been created in the first 10 years, right? So what does that signal for the next 10 years? It can only speed up, right? Uh, especially if we're all working together and especially if we take that mission that is there. And again, we put it up a second time is symbolically, right? So that the community understands that mission is always front and center. We don't forget why we're here. Even for those of us who have been here that entire 10 year period, we want that freshness to be there um, and, and to be passionate and really committed. In fact, at our last retreat, we talked about changing our mission or updating it. And we're like, this is so timeless. It says it all and you can feel the heart of what we are working toward in those words that you see there. So going forward, what does it mean? Well, one, we need the community to tell us what it means. But in terms of some of the guidelines that we're looking at, of course, we want to continue to preserve that unique character on Belle Isle, right? Which means placemaking is important and making sure the infrastructure that is necessary to continue to support it is there and that the people and the history is never forgotten and continues to be part of that DNA. And it helps us to define what that future is. So that is that is a really important part of the future is that unique character. And then, of course, our historic structures. We have a pedigree of architectural gems 
dams that must be protected, uh, whether it's the sawmill. I, many people don't even know about the sawmill, right? It's it's the coolest, coolest place. It's still functioning and operating in a somewhat derelict building that is derelict no more because of the passion and commitment of our arborists and others that are working together to get that thing, um, and I say thing in an affectionate way, operating again, um, serving the island and preserving that history. The Anascripts Whitcomb Conservatory and the Dome, you know, we fixed her acre joists in our first 10 years. Now we've got to fix the dome that those joists are holding up. Or, or maybe it's the $6 million that we've pumped into the aquarium. And that aquarium requires constant love and care, especially if it's to remain free and open to the public. So we can't forget our historic structures. And those structures also comprise part of that classic Olmsted design, right? He, he called for a strong formal zone. And that is what those beautiful structures do. And then the third area that we really must stay focused on in the next 10 years is the natural environment. We have 263 acres of flatwood mesic forest. It, it is one of the only uh, one left ones left in the world, quite frankly, it was created by the glaciers. So all of the work the DNR is doing to restore that uh, with its partners and programs like Keep El Al Beautiful that really help us you know, preserve and maintain the ecology of the island, all of the restoration that's going on in the habitat, the work that we're doing on geothermal solutions, the out off garden, quite frankly, that's another one of our beautiful natural assets that's new to the landscape. And it's kind of cool watching things like that take hold because those are the iconic things that are going to represent this moment in time on Belle Isle. So 10 years from now, folks are going to look back and say, oh, that's what they did. Or maybe it's the new sculpture at the Iron Bell Trail that the Nordeen brothers did. Those are the permanent markers that will mark this moment in time. So uh, we have to keep furthering those. And then we're going to say it again, the people, you know, our volunteers, the folks that come to our field trips, the, those that just visit the island in general, those that support our programming, um, those that uh, help us be a better advocates for you. Uh, and in my notes here, I put a big heart around the you because those are the people that we can't forget. And when we do it together, we're even better. So we hope everybody will go to our website, figure out how you can keep being part of that you um, and figuring out where, where your spot is, where your moment is, where your place is on Bell Isle, because quite frankly, we need you. We can't do it without you. Yeah. And, and I will, let's take people to the website um, on tonight on how they can get involved. Um, you know, the website uh, from the conversation taken here to the very next thing, how people can get involved. Um, how can they do so? Well, that's an easy part of what we do is telling you what to do, right? <laughs> Maybe that's the mom and me coming out. You need to do this, this, and this. <laughs> um, and today our marching orders are please come visit the Belle Isle Aquarium. Uh, it is free. It is open to the public. It, it's There's something there for everybody. It's it's so much more than just a place to be entertained. I don't know if you all caught in the um, video that we did earlier, the reel, but the axolotl took center stage. He, the, little, the pink little beautiful little animal um, who kind of filled the whole screen and he had his little furry hands up. Come see the axolotls. They have more personality than you can stand. And if you go to Mexico someday, you might see them on their currency or on the side of a bus because they have that uh, much personality and they're native to that area. Or it's maybe it's our garden eels or our mantis shrimp. Uh, and while you're there, maybe you'll be inspired to sponsor a tank because it takes a lot to keep those animals alive and well. And we need all the support we can get. And there are tank sponsorship opportunities. Or maybe when you go by our cute little donation box, it's a treasure your chest. It's all new. And that's your chance. And we made it really easy. We've got a little swipe machine there. Um, we, we're even hoping like maybe a child will accidentally swipe your credit card <laughs> and get your support to keep that uh, those tanks alive and well, literally, and support the staff team that's keeping it going. So yes, please visit our Belle Isle Aquarium and get involved. Come volunteer. Come join Kim, who we know is listening. Come join the C. Nicoles of the world who hail from the 48207 zip codes and be part of some yeah. of the family, a really special um, uh, a group that serves our island. Um, or come to our spring cleanup on April 23rd. Uh, and then uh, from April 22nd to 24th, which is Earth Day weekend, you can come see an art exhibit that um, really... Uh, 
empowers us or causes us to uh, contemplate the impact of climate change uh, on the world and certainly on Belle Isle or come to, if, you, if you're all about cake like I am, please come to the Belle Isle Aquarium on August 18th to celebrate its birthday. It was born in 1904. Uh -huh. So uh, we need to sing happy birthday loudly. We need lots of voices to help us do that and blow out those candles. And then, of course, we really encourage folks to give us their feedback dream with us. I mean, that's basically what it boils down to. What What is that future? And let's let's think big. Um, so, and then too, we would love to have your support as part of our giving society. You know, as, as we, as our funding sources change, right? If we lo lose the Grand Prix or this chain, and the Grand Prix has been such an exceptional partner. Without them, that aquarium would not be free and open to the public. There, that is one of our strongest public-private partnerships. So how do we keep um, melding other funding sources so that we don't lose any momentum? Our giving society is part of that solution. Mm. We have 80 members so far, but that family needs to grow significantly. So that'd be my other marching um, order as we forward march to our community. I love that. We're going to get more people involved. We're going to get that number up. Uh, you know, we're going to talk more about how people can get involved uh, as we continue to move forward throughout the program, because look, people, we, we all belong on Bell Isle, right? It's a, it's a jewel of our city, of our state. Uh, but I will also say, and I love this comment from Gary Menard. Uh, he's joining us tonight and he says, I have enjoyed flying kites. Now, look, I will say, I, I keep talking about um, the um, being out on the water, uh, kayaking, which I enjoy, but, I, I forgot how fun, how much I love um, flying kites as well. And, and Gary does as well. Uh, he says there will be the wind jammers come August 39th. Um, we also have Rochelle. She says, I recently applied to work at Bell Aquarium, hoping I do, in fact, belong. Ha ha. Yes, you do belong. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, Rochelle. <laughs> it sounds like we'd be honored to have you on our team. Yeah, she, just Gary, tied, you had she, just, she just tied that right on in. Right. I love that. I, and Andre, as, you and Gary are making me laugh because I feel like I could actually go tell you to go fly a kite and not get in trouble. But that Kite Fest day is one of the most spectacular days on Belle Isle. Everything feels right in the world. When you look up and you see all those beautiful kites and you see this diverse group of people enjoying it, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. And it goes back to protecting the the park culture uh, and, and what people uh, know and love about Belle Isle and, and, and what they're able to do to participate and enjoy some of the, um, the, the the traditions and also the infrastructure of Bell Isle. And again, the Bell Isle Conservancy uh, helps facilitate those conversations of what the people uh, want to see and want to do and feel on Bell Isle. Uh, and so the, the, the people are just a, an important conversation, an important part of this conversation. Uh, Ayo, uh, you know, you've been involved in building these relationships and talking with the community. I mean, we, we got a volunteer tonight who wants to be a part of it because um, because of meeting you and talking to you. And, and these type of one-on-one -on -one direct relationships are important because it's what is the fabric of what the BIC does. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. I think that there are a lot of the connections that we have right to the space come from the time that we spend with people. And if you mm -hmm. can connect the management or some of those other things which allow us to use the park to people, then it helps to build your um, ability or your um your concept of where you can offer feedback, how you can get assistance. It it really provides a, a human component to um, the work that we, not only the work that we do, but to the idea of service on a, in a public space in a park. Um, and so I really love that. I, I really enjoy being able to connect one-on-one -on -one, um, because I find so much in that. That's where you get the stories. That's where you get the nostalgia. That's where you get um, a lot of the important feedback, the important information um, that doesn't come from all the other ways that we're connected, say, to um, institutions or to um, centralized resource hubs or just other things that are, have less of a people focus. Um, and so that is why um, I really appreciate the work that I do. I enjoy it, especially the times that I get to spend on the island um, just talking to people. And so that's another thing I really want to point out is that people 
you know, we've talked about all the ways you can engage with us as the conservancy, especially as we celebrate 10 years. But some of the conversations that I've had are people who came out on their own accord. They weren't coming specifically for those things. They were coming because, you know, someone was in town or they were curious about um, a facility or they just, you know, had whatever their regular activity was going to be on the island. And I, you know, either I reached out to them or they connected with me, they saw my t-shirt or something like that. And so um, I think it's important that as much as we talk about the formalized ways to engage, right, you can do whatever it is you came to do on the island, and then you can engage with us by leaving your feedback, you know, whether it's the QR code that you see, we've had them um, at various places around the island, or you go to our website and fill it out. There's always that level of um, access to us. There's always that avenue for bringing things full circle um, and informing the work that we do, which allows people or supports what people are doing on their own. Um, and so just really want to point out that as much as we're here for the environment, is here for you know um, facilitating in that way, much of our work is irrelevant or much, much, it's much more relevant because there are people. We can't do some of the things we do without you, without people. Um, and so I, I experience that every day in my work and I just really wanna emphasize that point. Um, and so, you know, I, again, just ask that people um, connect with us, whether that's on site at the aquarium, through our education programs, through our volunteers. Um, you know, if you see me at the aquarium, um, just or, you know, anywhere on the island, if you see us engage, um, because that is an important way that connections are made, an important way for us to strengthen our work yeah. um, and yeah. also strengthen the experience that people have. So, yeah, we all belong on Bell Isle, you know, so make sure that you you, you volunteer, attend an event, um, donate, give back, uh, visit the Bell Isle Aquarium. And also tonight, take out your cell phone. So be engaged on the island and also right now online um, by using that QR code and uh, it's going to link you to the website so that you can be a part of the input and conversations that are uh, being had to really connect uh, the voices of the Detroit area to our Detroit jewel and that is Bell Isle Park and the Bell Isle Conservancy. Uh, Michelle, uh, there are quite a few things uh, coming up that's that's headed our way as we look forward to future events uh, on Bell Isle Park. Uh, but before we get to that, Michelle, because I don't think I asked you tonight, what is the, what, what's one of the exciting things you enjoy the most on Bell Isle? You know, while Aya was talking, um, she reminded me of the early days of the Conservancy when we received some feedback that um, we weren't diverse enough. And they were right, right? And I said, give us time, we will get there. Cause when you have the, it's not that the talent's not there. It's not that the people aren't there. It's you have to have the relationships to connect to your community and, and, and harness them and bring them in and look at us now, right? And I think that's one of the things I love most about Belle Isle. It's this rich, rich ecosystem that's home to all. And yeah. that's when I, it feels the most um, satisfying and meaningful because she is there for us no matter what the need in our community and we can't forget that and um you know and that's on the powerful side and then there's also the soft side andre one of my favorite moments on the island is about to come and that's daffodil season and you can see the daffodils right there on the screen it is now a destination for daffodils and the folks that have been so committed like the robin hellers and jan ellison's of the world and others who have ensured that there's a daffodil for every detroiter on bell isle come see yours come put your name on one of those daffodils don't pick it but come look <laughs> at it and, and talk to it so it shines brightly bellisleconservancy.org for more information we're still taking your comments and questions tonight here on here on our Facebook Live and also on YouTube. So make sure that you dip, do give us um, a shout out and any questions or um, comments you may have, you can send it to us our way, uh, hashtag um, SOBIC22. Uh, also, you can follow us uh, on Twitter, and that is Detroit BIC, and also on Instagram and Facebook, just search Bell Owl Conservancy. Um, 
Let's also mention that website one more time, thealcaservice.org, because again, this is where you belong and this is where you can get more information on how to volunteer, attend an event, donate, uh, give feedback, and also visit the Bell Isle Aquarium. Before we leave tonight, I I think, um, we, so I know that there have been many times I've come with my family on Bell Isle for like a, a family uh, get together, or most recently as an adult, I've enjoyed Bell Isle most for <laughs> kayaking. I'll mention that again. <laughs> and I'm just waiting for the, <laughs> but also now yes. that I feel like I'm a part of the family with the, with the Bell Isle Conservancy, I feel like I want to be more engaged as a, as a volunteer and in helping um, spread the conversation about how people uh, can get involved. I, I think if we want to be a part of the conversation, like cleanup, uh, the thousands of pounds of trash that have been removed over the years, um, but that's all because of the partnerships and volunteers who were able to come out and do so, and the BIC was a, an important part of facilitating that, right? Well, and Andre, think of how fortunate we would be ha to have somebody like you and others that are listening, right? And, and and maybe it starts out in a very important role like pulling trash out of the canals. And then eventually you sit on our board of directors and you're there really representing the community, right? Really making sure that we are on track and grounded. And that reminds me, we should um, thank the chairs of our community engagement committee, Shani Penn and David Bell and the chair of our board of directors, Nancy Vela and all of our board of directors, uh, the members of which that you've seen flash on the screen. So I'm envisioning an Andre Ash <laughs> on there or a Nicole, you know, or, or again, the people that are out there that um, really are uh, integral to our community and need to um, be in a decision making role and a leadership role so that we stay on track. Um, so that would be pretty darn cool. So I like yeah. how you're thinking. Consider yourself recruited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll be a part of the recruitment team. I'll join IO for more community engagement because that's what we need is the importance uh, why uh, why everyone should pitch in uh, to help keep our jewel um, what it should be. And that is a jewel of our city. Uh, we've got Ryan Southern check it in tonight. He says, hello, what are the plans for the area? He asks, what are the plans for the area of the island that infrastructure was overbuilt for the Grand Prix? Will there be an effort to take it back to a more natural environment? Great question, Ryan. And I don't know if you all know Ryan, but he's an amazing photographer and he's donated his services. And especially for the Out Off Garden, you should all visit that website and see what he's capable of. It's quite impressive. So thank you, Ryan, for all you do. And you ask a really important question. We all want to know what's going to happen, right? And I know that all of the partners at the table, the Grand Prix, the DNR, etc., want to ensure that Belle Isle is in its best condition. So the DNR is working on what will happen to the paddock, uh, which which is the um, concrete pad that has been used to facilitate and administer the Grand Prix. Um, we do have a mobility study that we're entering uh, into and engaging in in the next in the coming months and for the balance of the year. So that pad could become an important element in ensuring mobility. And certainly want to, we want to make sure it's screened and, 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 and is a welcoming um, site to see when you enter the island. And I'm, I'm convinced that the DNR will get us there and that the Grand Prix will be an important partner because I know my experience of working them for the last 10 years, they're very mission minded. They very much want, want what's best for Belle Isle. So we're on it, Ryan, but keep asking because that's the healthy tension we need. Uh, we want to hear from our community. Yeah, I mean, when you think about uh, the many years Grand Prix has been a part of the um, part and now that it has a different location. So, you know, what's going to replace it? I think that's a very critical uh a conversation that should be had and through the bell Isle conservancy uh this is the outlet where people uh, can be a part of that conversation and what they want to see for the future of bell Isle, and also to spark the conversation about so where are the funding sources to be able to replace um you know some of the previous funding sources from um, prior years because we know that uh with great partnerships like the grand prix has been uh those financial resources have helped um, fuel and fund the different projects uh, that have helped Bell Isle Park over these um, 
um, past few years. So an important conversation that needs to be had um, for sure, Michelle and, and Io. That's right. And we're having them. Um, and, I, I'm, I'm, and, and they're productive and they're going to have a good result. And if I could add to that, I think that's why it's so important that um, everyone pitch in. That's why it's so important that everyone be involved so that when it's time to have these important conversations, um, we're not um, with we're, there's no void in terms of who can contribute and represent um, the various interests. Right. So um, if we're connected already, um, then you don't necessarily have to to seek it in a way that is. Um, you know, disingenuous or anything like that. People are involved, they're connected. And so what happens is important to them. And because it's important to them, they offer their feedback. Um, and so I think that it's just important. Um, and that's not to imply that that is the case already, right? But just to emphasize that when things are organic, then all parts of the relationship are, again, are organic, not one part or another um, to separate those. So, um, you know, that's on the that's why it's important institutionally in terms of strategy and and planning that people pitch in together. But Belle Isle is a shared space. Um, I can't share say that enough. It's a civic commons. It's a space that we all um, come for either recreation or, you know, athleticism or, um, you know, spirituality. The reasons go on and on and on uh, social activity. And if we all care for it, then we can all use it. Um, and we, we have this understanding that the space is well cared for because we all do that together. And mutual investment always yields mutual results and mutual benefit. And so I think that it's important that we really are cognizant of that when each of us comes to the park for our own reasons, that we don't leave this space um, in a way that others can't do the same. Um, so with that, there's this one thing I want to add. We have, of course, the feedback form. We have all these ways to connect with us. But if there's something specific, um, then the email address is community at belleisleconservancy.org. That's how you can um, send direct information. That's how you can send direct inquiries. And we do all we can to make sure that those are addressed, um, whether it's filtering them to someone else or to a different um, you know, department or whoever can provide the appropriate answers, um, you know, that is a part of the process that allows us to really um, move things along. Well, I, 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 I think you stole my thunder, <laughs> but that's just fine because we can put it out in so many different ways, so many different times uh, on the feedback that people can give to be a part uh, of the uh, conversation and also providing input to what uh, the Bell Isle Conservancy does. Michelle, uh, I'll give you the final word on this one and uh, and how the BIC moves forward after 10 years and um, the different programs underway as you move forward. Well, you know what, Andre, we'll take your thunder too. We need a lot of it this time of year, right? That'll make sure those daffodils pop up. Um, you know, maybe the punctuation point at the end of this uh, moment today is this. I had an opportunity to attend one of our um, our field trips this past uh, week that we do with D uh, the DPS, the Detroit Public Schools Community District. And, and in this case, it was our fifth graders that were at the Belle Isle Aquarium. And it was very moving to be part of that and to watch the learning happen and the excitement that the children were having. And, th and I was already moved. And then at the end, um, one of the young ladies was walking out and she looked at the teacher that led the um, session and she said, I will never forget you. And she meant it. Yeah. He had that much power on her. That's why you should come to Belle Isle. That's why you should be part of Belle Isle because that's the power of it. And if people are looking for an easy opportunity to do that in the coming weeks, again, come April 21st to the 24th and enjoy our art exhibit um, that compels thought and discussion about climate change. And there's some amazing submissions from Hadassah's Green Sky and um, teachers from around the area and the like. I think you'll all very much enjoy Wow. Compelled by the art that you're going to see. And then, of course, the cleanup itself from 930 to noon on uh, April 23rd is another good opportunity to intersect. And, and if that's not good enough for you, then you complete our feedback form and you tell us what will get you to Belle Isle and we'll make it happen. And I, I'm going to play a. will say right now, I'll play a big role in, in being a part of that, leading the way and, and making sure people give their feedback and also being a part of that cleanup day as well. I, I love that. 
And Andre, just a quick point. If people can't make it out um, for the spring cleanup, it, that is actually the day that kicks off our season. And so we have cleanups all throughout the summer um, through October. And so people can come check our website. I know that that is something we've you know mentioned and perhaps I'm kind of interjecting on Michelle a little bit, but just want to make sure that people know they can come all summer long and support the cleanups at the beach, around the island. Um, yeah. So important. And and that feedback uh, live form we will have available uh, through the access QR code. Uh, so make sure that you uh, do uh, link to that to be a part of asking the questions uh what you what will make you come to bell out um, because certainly we all belong on bell out park uh, michelle president and ceo of the bell out conservancy uh io community engagement io thomas from the bell out conservancy as well uh this has been fun i mean 10 years you all have been doing great work and there's still a lot more uh, to do and so i'm sure there's a great vision ahead and uh this has been a this has been a great conversation tonight Thanks, Thanks, Andre. It's work we have to do together. Just want to remind people, it's, you know, it's something we're doing collaboratively. So that's how we move forward. All right. And thanks so much for watching the States of the Conservancy brought to you by the Bell Owl Conservancy. This has been a uh, important conversation. You can watch uh, this rebroadcast right here on our Facebook Live at the Bell Isle Conservancy, as well as on YouTube, and also through the hashtag of SOBIC22, and on Twitter as well, at Detroit BIC. Uh, thanks so much for watching. For more information on how you can be a part uh, of the conversation and what you'd like to see on Bell Isle and participating in some of the, on the projects, uh, such as the trash pickup and uh, other uh, projects and services on Bell Isle, make sure that you do go to the website. Uh, you can also email community at bellalconservancy.org. Thanks so much for tuning in to the State of Conservancy tonight. I'm Andre Ash, digital anchor for Michigan Chronicle. Enjoy Bell Isle.